something something really weird happened to me a couple of days ago. Happy New Year, by the way, everyone. Hello. <laughs> oh yeah, Hello. Happy, how's it going? Yeah, it's um, a really strange thing happened to me the other day. Uh, mm. So uh, <laughs> we're all working from home now uh, because of rules. Um, but I boss. rules boss, yeah, That's rules boss. Now. I occasionally nip into the triple jump office just to do my voiceovers and stuff. So I was in the car driving back from the office the other day and I was quite near my house. I was just going along the, the little high street uh, near near where I live uh, in the car and out of nowhere, the radio just cut out, right? And it was kind of white noise, but it wasn't quite white noise. It was like... Um, it was like the sound of someone using a jet washer outside. It was sort of going like... <laughs> Discord you know, decided kind of... it doesn't want us to hear that. But... Yeah, Discord did, oh, well, Discord did not play that for No, us. probably not. I thought it was white noise, but everyone at home will have heard me make that noise. But, you know, real mm. sort of swishy static sound. Mm. And I could just sort of barely hear the music underneath. I was like, okay, well, the, the, you know, I just need to tune the radio or something. Uh, but rather than tune it, I went to a different station and that was working. I was like, oh, that's a bit weird. Why would it just cut out like that? It was fine. So I went back to that station again and it was still doing the swishy noise. But then out of nowhere, I heard in quite a sort of northern accent, just this woman say, music. And then there was this sort of bleep sound, you know, like a, from a police radio, just to kind of like, bloop. Mm. Yeah, uh, and then it carried on doing doing some swishies. I was like, "What? Wait, what the hell was that?" And it carried on swishing for a bit, and then eventually it was music. Bloop again. I was like, "This is really strange." And then I noticed that if I accelerated the car, I was in traffic. I was, I was stationary when all this was happening. But then once the car started going again, I was speeding up. I was kind of gaining the the music back again. This the actual. Oh my God proper radio signal so i was like why is that linked to my speed and my movement what's going on um and then as i started to stop again in the traffic it went back to white noise and just a woman saying music on occasion i was really confused oh. and then i uh this this happened for like a couple of minutes in this traffic jam and then eventually i just sort of uh, pulled off at my turning to go down to my street and as soon as i left the road the radio came back on perfectly and I feel like what might have caused it is someone joined the queue, like two cars behind me. And when I was like setting off, moving again, I was getting away from them just temporarily. And then they were moving along the queue as well, getting closer to me. And then something in that car oh. was interfering with my radio. So when they were getting closer nice. again in the traffic jam, it was so strange though. Like, I don't... <laughs> I don't know what. Why was there a woman saying music? music. Why could you hear her? I don't it's really know. Oh. It was like a what are those radio uh, stations number called? Station. Oh, yeah, it was like a number <laughs> station, but just the word I found music. Some shit, secret agent radio station. <laughs> just, yeah, Peter's just been uh, assigned to his mission. Get ready. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know what it was. She was just, and it was like a, she wasn't saying it a different way every time. It was just clearly a recording of this woman, but she was going like music and then just a bleep noise. It's really That's strange. So weird. I Googled it to see if it was like a, maybe, maybe for like diagnostic purposes, if like that model of car like plays that as some kind of placeholder if your radio breaks or something. But yeah. it's quite difficult to Google static. Radio music, uh, you know, because yeah. Google doesn't understand what exactly you're asking. But uh, That's yeah, really, really weird. In fact, I'd be very interested wow. to know if anyone in the audience can explain not necessarily what was interfering with my car because I, I don't that's not really relevant. But what where was I getting the, the woman from? That's what <laughs> I want to know. I'm a big fan of the fact she was a northern woman because usually yeah. these kind of robotic voices, it's all like the Queen's English, like exactly. music. That's, that was really strange as well. <laughs> music. <laughs> Sounds like some really dodgy Alan Partridge shows. Yeah. <laughs> Static in music. Oh. As as Mikey said, maybe you've now been activated. It's entirely possible. You were, you were a sleeper agent and now unknowing to you, you you've got a, a, t a thirst for blood. I've got to go and kill music <laughs> no it's Target already acquired. dead it's already dead oh, geez, it is it died a long time ago 
<laughs> uh, well, talking of music, oh, you think maybe yeah. we should uh, yeah, play, play, play the music? Oh, go on then. Hmm. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Podiots, the official Vidiots yes. podcast. Woo! It's a conversational podcast where we take some questions from you at home and obey the law of the three us, where everybody brings a thing along to, to talk, talk about. about. I'm Ben. I'm Peter. And I've got a hot take to kick off the new year. Oh. Wow. Nice to meet you. I've <laughs> got a hot take to kick off the new year. I'm Dad. <laughs> oh, very good. I think 2022 is going to mark the year that the three pound Tesco meal deal is abolished. I think this is it. What? It's had its oh run. Oh my God. Inflation. No more meal deals. No more meal deals. Maybe I think I anticipate it's going to go up to three pound 50 and... I think oh, because shit. of, you know, Brexit, rising, just inflation, rising food prices across the board. I don't see how it's sustainable, especially when you got buggers like me who go in there and put, as part of the meal deal, get like a two pound can of Red Bull with it, which has got to be demolishing <laughs> yeah. their, po- their profits single handedly. So I'm sorry, but um, that's going to happen. I'm, well, I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on the news for this because yeah. it's, it's going to happen. I know it. You might be right. Well, Ben already knows this, but before our Christmas party... Um, last at the end of last year uh before we started drinking i'd not eaten all day and i was like oh i just want to get something i don't care what it is i'm gonna quickly nip nip to the shop and i just grabbed i mean there wasn't much to go at so i had i I had to grab a basic ham sandwich it's literally called (laughs) just ham uh and i thought any bread in it no and then i got like so i got some nice crisps but it was like kettle chips or something and i was like i probably just should have water as well because i've not drunk much water today so I got a bottle of water and when I took it to the counter, uh, it didn't give me the three pound meal deal because the total as individual constituent wow. parts was only two pound 95. So wow. uh, I didn't even get a meal deal from it. It was that cheap. So it's God. still possible, Mikey. It's, mm. it's just everyone's going to have to live off just ham, water just and ham just. And water. Just ham. <laughs> just ham. Just You're probably ham. right though, Mikey. Because even though Tesco, Terry Tesco, can definitely afford to have a little less pocket money, I think I mean fewer, fewer pocket money. You do. Um, he is almost certainly absolutely not going to stand for making a loss, you no, know, taking no. a loss. It's a British it's institution, so. but it, it I think you're wrong. Last forever. Oh, that, oh, that, oh. that it's um, Mr. Terry Tesco. I think it's it's M- Ms. Tesco. I don't uh, think it's okay. all right. I don't think Terry owns <laughs> okay. it anymore. This is how we're going to start off 2022. <laughs> yeah, arguing yeah, about how the, we the pun name of the person who owns Tesco. <laughs> Outstanding. Yeah. Well, everybody, welcome. We mm. hope you had a fantastic and safe Christmas and New Year. We're back at it again on the Podiots. Uh, there's no time for what happened this week on Vidiots f- uh, four <laughs> years ago oh. just yet because we didn't actually launch until, was it February? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Every so night, we got, something like that. This week we'll on see out this Vidiots four years ago, we were just kind of painting a wall or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, we were. Something yeah. like that. Um, being hyped up by the Yogg's cast and absolutely not being able to <laughs> live up to that hype. <laughs> Putting we're not a single... Shadow of Viz Rafael. No. We're not. <laughs> no. Sorry. Yeah, what was it's, it? There uh, was something to do with the... We were launching on... Oh, God. Yeah. What was it? Was mm. it like five... 501 or yep. something it was like the 5th of january was something that wasn't the launch of the channel but like that yeah, was maybe it, the day we announced it i think something. it was like the yogs cast put out a tweet and it was like get ready at 501 we've got a very special uh, f- announcement 501 yeah <laughs> and people going 501 soi shadow of israfel <gasps> no no, it's no, not. It's, it's, it's us. <laughs> Thank you for having us. We had a nice time. Mm. Uh, yeah, there was no way we could live up to that hype. But uh, Vidiots hasn't quite kicked off yet officially four years ago, so we'll get to that eventually. What we can do right now, though, mm. is one th- is one th- We're going one through the wonderful Pod Squad for this week. Do you know what Pod Squad is? Well, we'll flip and tell you. If you go to streamlabs.com forward slash Podiots donations, give three pounds or more, you'll get a shout out at the beginning and the 
the end of the show and you'll be part of Pod Squad for this week. It really, really genuinely helps us and goes towards very important things like buying Dave Benson Phillips' thoroughly used <laughs> toilet seat or paying the Podbean subscription that's coming up probably pretty soon oh, God, that yeah, allows yeah, us that. to put the podcast on the internet in the first place for you to download. So if you are in a position to do it, would very much appreciate it. If you're not, Tell your flipping friends, will you? Tell yeah. your friends. Do it. Tell your friends about Podius. You didn't four years ago, so do <laughs> you it now. Bloody well, didn't, did you? <laughs> We're you never going to get over didn't. this. Do it now. <laughs> fucking did. Mikey is going to kick off the first troop. No, what is what is yours? Oh, Squad. The pumpy platoon. Mm. Platoon. The mm. platoon. The first platoon of 2022. We start strong with the generous Hawkman 105. I went all Sean Connery there, the generous. Gen- oh, oh. Oh. Hawkman 105, been very generous, and they say, forgot to donate in time for the Xmas episode, so I'm making up for it with a big one now. Oh. Hope everyone's had a good oh. festive season, and let's hope 2022 isn't a steaming pile of plop like the last two years. Have a good one, lads. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks. you. Specky Becky, Sprinkles McFartstash. Very nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your mum has a username. The generous Katie Kin Solo haven't been able to donate recently because life. I hope you boys are well. Yeah, we hope you oh, are thank too. You. Thank you. Hope you're well. That's very Meg, <laughs> Meg wrote this in the bath. Nice. Something witty. Serene is a giant birch bitch. Ooh, Serene, oh, coming for you there. Noel Edmonds from Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> Molly, stop meowing at me. Mikey McMikington, the very generous Sniper Griffin. I began last year worried about money, but now I'm feeling better about things. Here is some money, love, for you boys who bring me so much joy. I wish I had something funny to add, like Booker Booker or Woozle Wazzle. If anyone needs me, I'll be in my room. Well, you've Thank got you laughs sniper. from all three of us yeah, there. I enjoyed so. that. <laughs> yeah, very well done. Well done. Steven Scodes. Mr. Blobby becomes a tour guide. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Black, arse face. My sister caught me wanking. Good, oh. good. Mm. It's all about the New Year coom and Lozzy Kins. Thank you all very much. Oh, thank you, guys. First tiny troop of 2022 uh, begins with Bill and Ben, the bot, bot, bot men. <laughs> uh, the People's Republic of Chega. Lord B and TP's Pumukul fan club. Uh, pro trainer. Freddie W sent Laker to space. Oh, that's the dog that never came back. I mean, it did. Oh. It was. <laughs> it, it was never fine. Never came back. <laughs> I am Bartek from Name Redundant. Um, and here are the top ten hottest <laughs> Podiats donators of 2022. Uh, the very generous <laughs> R.I.P. Mr. Chegwin, oh. who said. Uh, hi, lads. It's your boy, Andrew. The time has come to put the final nail in Chegwin's coffin and lay him to rest. New name suggestions, please. As obscure as you like. Happy New Year and looking forward to all the new content. Okay, love you. Bye. So I think Andrew maybe started the Chegwin oh. name trend right. of 2021. And now he wants new a new suggestion. Hmm. Um, well... We I should think you should just choose it. your. <laughs> we should. <laughs> I've uh, always had an att- affinity for David Dickinson. I think his name. Okay, David Dickinson. Yeah, a strong show. cheapest yeah. chips. <laughs> cheapest chips. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I was going to say, a uh, uh, commander Richard Marcinko, who we should. I don't know if it's too soon. Mm. Mm. Oh, I forgot he died. Oh, rest we in peace. We lost him. Oh. We lost him over the Christmas break. We Actual lost him. Yeah. In fact, demo we Dick is that. gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rick. Known, not very nice guy. man. Dick, yeah, Dick he was problematic, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Legally different from Dick Mychinko, who lives on in all of our hearts. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the list continues. Uh, good luck, Andrew, by the way, thank choosing you, choosing someone. Uh, thank you for the donation. New Year, New Dave. New Year, <laughs> New Meat Face. Don mm. Echo 7. Rip Dick Mychinko. Uh, that asshole's not twitching. Oh, God. Oh, right. God, Jesus. There we are. Oh. Oh. Raindrop Joy. Uh, new Year, New Start, hyphen Anus Tart. <laughs> Lovely. A new start. A new start. Anus Tart. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hermit's a Hermit the Pog. Nice. Uh, the very generous Happy Halloween from Rules Boss. <laughs> 
Elle, elle a, this is us boss, elle a Happy Halloween. Oh, elle a, yes, this is us boss, not really, it's deluxe underscore man. Haha, <laughs> got him. Fun got fact. Him. Fun fact, everyone at my work now does Simon Miller impressions, but have no idea who he is. My work here is done. Bye. Kiss, kiss. Ah, see, there we go. Told, told their friends there. Uh, indeed. And they don't understand what they're doing. <laughs> what, did, what did you say? To, did you just start saying words like him and they caught on? No, it's okay. Um, it's okay. It's easily. It's quite contagious, yeah. really. That's true. You yeah. sort of fall into it quite easily if you uh, don't pay attention. It's not like day one you need to know who he is. You've got to learn how to do the voice first. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, the list continues with Jules Far Dead and She Dead. Uh, non-checkable tokens <laughs> and Ben is getting booed. Fine, boo oh. me. Oh, Thank okay. you. I don't give a shit. Jeez. The fast crew, the first fast crew, I should say, of 2022 is as follows: Bop it, twist it, pull it, check it. <laughs> uh, ooh, backwards, ooh. T- backwards joke. There we are. But backwards it was backwards. Joke. So um, it was Echoj Straw Cab. Mm. Thank you. The very generous Crapolian, who said, I fucking love this podcast. Here's some money. Leon. Oh, Cheers. Oh, legend. Oh, Crapo Leon. Crapo, <laughs> Crapo Leon. Ivana Shave You. <laughs> very nice. Thank you for your donation. Ross Snowball. The very generous Prince Beefcakes, who said, I'd like to personally thank Peter for the deadpan reading of my previous holiday message about being briefly stranded in a blizzard. 10 out of 10 stars. Mm. Absolutely correct vibes. Wishing you all and the whole pod squad bountiful luck in the new year. Keys, keys. I'm glad you made it, Prince Beefcakes. <clears throat> Absolutely. Mr. Macca, the very generous Surfer Dog 03, Gil SP. Gil SP, I think. Happy fucking New Year, my dudes. Thanks for the awesome content across the board. I wanted to say thank you for answering my question months ago about the would you rather question. Felt like I hit the lottery. Have a wonderful 2022. Cheerio. Oh, cheers. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> Pingu's dad killed Pingu's mum. Oh, no. We're getting a bit closer to Christmas now as we get to the end of these because <laughs> yeah. we get them in the wrong order. Yeah. Rudolf Schittler. Oh, nice. Well done. Right. Well done. Uh, the very generous stroke off Trent. He says, <laughs> hello, boys or girls. This is a small token of my gratitude. 2021 was the hardest year of my life. I dealt with depression. And even though I have a support system, it's been tough. Thanks for making me laugh on the sad days and every other day, too. Cheers. Thank you, stroke off Trent. <laughs> you stroke All the off best. Trent, we'll be doing better. Yeah. All right now. Yeah. You ever played Mind Goblins? Mind <laughs> Goblin D's Nuts. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> two separate donations there very well, well done. done nice it worked uh, love you boys or girls 15 quid is what it says they donated three pounds uh, <laughs> this cost 12 quid Caroline three pounds <laughs> outright may have fucked it thing right so that you read this trying to get reverse donation wow right uh, so they that's still got it back. wrong <laughs> It's yes. supposed to say trying to get reverse donation thing right so that you read this outright may have fucked it. <laughs> yeah, you did. Oh, yeah. Let's start with the last message first. I think Thank that may you. be, it's probably intentional. I think that's uh, the part of the joke. Yeah. Star for us. Well done. Yeah. Dave and Ben's son, Philip. <laughs> and finally, epileptic fridge boy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Funky all smell of you that. For joining Pod Squad this week, the first Pod Squad of 2022. You will, of course, get a shout out at the end of the show as well. Streamlabs.com forward slash Poddy It's Donations, three pounds or more. I Michael love Johnson. doing Pod Squad so much. Oh, it's you love a treat. I, lo- I love doing Pod Squad. It's just it's always, it's my favorite it's part of the podcast. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> Never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Mikey. Hello. You want some questions? Oh, I've got some questions here right in front of me. Would you like Mm. one? Yes, please. We start with the veritable Tommy the Wank Engine at Trigley Seride T on Twitter. (laughs) He says, all right, folks, let's take a look back. Oh, oh, Michael, you can read better than this. Good start to the year. (laughs) Yes. Getting out (laughs) early. It'll be smooth sailing from here. Let's take a look back at the goals you set for your 2021 selves back in episode 68 oh, of Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you all accomplish your goals? Peter, yours was to get married. How'd that go? Oh, it didn't. <laughs> oh, it didn't no. happen. Failed. Oh. 
Damn. Mission failed, boys. We'll get him next time. We Fingers will crossed, hopefully though, get him year. next time. This should be the year. Yeah. Um, it's getting it ever closer. It's less than a year away now. Um, it's it's never been less than a year away up to this point because by the time we got 10 or 11 months away to the original date, I think at that point we knew it wasn't going to happen. So uh, we are now, we're now ready to go. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is it. Yeah. It's going to happen. Is that all God, I said? Is- get married. Yeah, apparently. That would, <laughs> seemed like a shoe in at the time, probably. <laughs> the one Easy. thing. Yeah. This can't continue, can it? Whoops. Mm. Yeah, well, fingers crossed. Yes, looking forward to it. <laughs> Mine was apparently to shower every day. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. I, mean, I, can't, I, I probably should have made a note how often I showered. I can I can guarantee it wasn't every day, but it was at least more days than not. So um, I'm counting that as a victory if you round it up. So I'm okay. giving myself a big old pat on the back That's because you were working from home, isn't it, partly, I think. Yes, you're trying yes. to just motivate yourself to get up, shower, yeah, just, get dressed. Yeah. You get you get your desk and it's like, ah, oh, no one can smell me. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I've fallen into old pajama habits already. I don't know about you, Ben. I'm yeah, I'm, quite I'm often... wearing my work outfit right now. Yeah, I, I've had a shower and then got back into my work outfit, which is joggers <laughs> and a hoodie. Yeah, I wear joggers a lot. I'm doing I'm, I, at least one area I'm improving in is I'm getting up at a good time consistently every day. So I'm that's mm. I'm hopefully that streak continues. I'm like, oh, a congratulations, busy, sleepy well boy. Done, man. Proud of yeah. you. Yeah. You, don't, you want to know my secret? Going to bed <laughs> earlier. <laughs> no, I probably should do that, but not that. I've set an I found an alarm where you have to take a picture to um I take a picture of a certain object to turn it off. And so I've just took a picture of something on the fridge. So I have to go all the way downstairs, turn it off. And at that point, I'm in front of the coffee machine. Bam, I'm awake. I bet Claudia loves that. (laughs) Yes. Because historically, I used to have about 10 alarms in the morning. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, it's it's, it's an aggressive alarm as well. uh, She's just dropped off to sleep at (laughs) seven in the morning. And off you go. Is it the threat of violence that motivates you as much as making the sound (laughs) stop? (laughs) And Ben... Uh, mm. Your goal was to get back to human levels of speed. Oh, How's that man. going? Well, I did. I injured my IT band um, like four, five months ago. They sing songs so, about computers. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I beat the shit out of them. Yeah. Um, and and so I've 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 had to stop running or ease all the way back off it and do alternative exercise instead. So I would say that I am back at relatively normal levels in that i don't run faster than light anymore so uh, okay. because otherwise i'd you know i'd hurt myself so injury forced me to slow down mm. nice so maybe this year I think we've already set goals for this year haven't we i think one of the i think the last poddy it's before did we, we finish i think i think it was a question or we asked each other about resolutions didn't we or maybe not i don't i don't know that we did you know I maybe i'm thinking of a, we did i cannot remember I it may have been a conversation no i had on new year's eve sort of half not well, not really very sober, and I'm just remembering it as a pod yet, but <laughs> you're on <laughs> such <laughs> autopilot now with all aspects of your life that it's just it drinking turns. with my family going, a thing, a log <laughs> to talk about. Were you playing the 50p game? Did, is that why it felt like it was pod yet's time? It's entirely possible. I thought it was a donation from Streamlabs, the, the 50 pence. Shout uh, out to mum. Thanks, <laughs> mum. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers for the Lego. Yeah. Rudolph Chitler, thank you, everyone. Just, you know, the most heinous pod squad names. Oh, no. Before you start any Grandma. conversation with someone, you just have to show them a picture of Dave to mark the beginning. Yes, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, maybe we didn't then. Well, mm, perhaps we'll have not. to set some fresh goals. Oh, God, do we have any any ideas? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't, I've, I've just lost all hope. I just want to just keep going. It would be nice, but I, I want to know. Broad. I mean, it's it's you know, there's like rules of goal setting and how to do it properly. I'm gonna just this doesn't take any of the boxes as to how you're supposed to set goals. But I, vaguely speaking, want to take more photos this year. Oh, okay, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. I don't take enough nice. photos. Well, uh, if you I, get married, hopefully that. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's a whole book of photos. True. Um, and I also I I want to buy like a a nice little photo printer or something. Um, yeah and like get an, an album because i think having physical photos is a good idea because i don't look at them otherwise i don't know where they are no so, it just uh, goes into the full one void which you never check and you never it does yeah they need the void printing. the void 
God, taking you guys? pictures is a good one. I might steal that because yeah. I'm just scrolling yeah. through my, my phone at the minute. It's all just pictures of Karen and the ferrets, and that doesn't mm. I don't think that represents my life. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I document enough moments, like social events and yeah, stuff. Exactly. I'll take like a photo of oh I'm having I'm having a drink. So I take a photo of the drink and send it to someone who who's asking, like, oh, how's it going? Like, I'm having this drink. Uh so yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be nice to take more photos. Mm. Uh, other than that. I can't really think of anything that's not like immensely depressing to, to like Same. say aloud. Yeah, well, yeah, I avoided yes. that sort of stuff. But yes. I want to I want to fix deep rooted issues I have identified in myself. Mm. Oh loads, boy, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. besides that, though, I don't really know. I'm doing I'm doing a month without takeaway currently. Ooh. Oh, okay. Because I'm a bit of a takeaway fiend. I do enjoy it very much, mm. and so I'm trying to do a month. And I am. I am hating it a lot, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I've, it's, it's my vice and my vice is gone now. Oh. And so what do I do? Do I just start doing heroin instead? What do yeah. I replace it yeah. with? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's a good do heroin happen. this month and then next month, try and do a month without heroin and see yes. how well that goes. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just work through all the class A drugs throughout yeah. this year. Like a, like a terrible life shortening advent calendar. That would be brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Godspeed, Ben. Good luck in your Bad advent calendar. Hey. Uh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you know how I get on. Or I won't, in which case I've died. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. then the uh, the Poly It's Money only goes two ways. So I'm I'm all in favor <laughs> of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For a short while, it'll fund Ben's drug habits, and then it'll fund his funeral. And then <laughs> it'll just yeah, go straight to yeah, for an Peter. expensive one month, and then you guys can have all of it afterwards. Sweet. Just make weird. sure you sign Dave's toilet seat before you die. <laughs> yes. Otherwise yeah, we that... need to sell that, don't oh, we? We God. do need to He's sell that. We're forgetting about that. We do yeah. genuinely have it, we promise. It's in the Triple Jump office right now. Yeah. I have to walk, it's behind Peter, and I have to squeeze between Peter and Dave's thoroughly used toilet seat every time I want to get to my desk. <laughs> Very few people in the world have ever squeezed between me and Dave Benson Phillips's <laughs> thoroughly used no. toilet seat. Considerably no. used. Oh. Considerably. That's I forget what the word That's is. A, Considerably. Oh, so good. Yeah. What about you, Mikey? What's your what's your thingy? I don't know. I think I feel like I always say the same thing. I just want to make more stuff. It feels like I've been in a rut for a couple of years in terms of making things and uh, mm. just, just push myself to do something, regardless what it is, even if it feels like a stupid little worthless idea. At least you've done something. That'd be nice. So I, I don't you know what that entails. Single handedly start up vidiots again if you wanted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just play all the roles. <laughs> I recreate every video video, but it's just me alone on the couch saying all the lines and waiting to empty silence and then responding. Like, oh, that'd be such an art piece. It would. <laughs> For you one take year. up stop motion or something and animate the whole thing. Oh, that'd be cute. Oh, like a little Christmas special video. So like horrible, horrible little clay figures of you both. That'd be cute. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a, oh, good, just, that's a good thing though, Mikey. You yeah. get, get creative. Yeah, do oh, stuff. Do stuff, do stuff, want to do some stuff. Speaking yeah. of stuff, who wants to present their thing? Hmm, I could go. Okay. Yes. It's an anecdotal thing. Ooh. Oh, double yeah. dummy. I'm going to start off with an actual story about what happened to me over the Christmas break in my car. Yes. Gather around the fire. In oh, your car. car story. In wow. my car. The Was car it- what struck Peter. <laughs> was it someone saying music on the radio <laughs> no it wasn't sadly uh, i wish that would have been far simpler uh so there there were two occasions within the space of a few days where i was i went on a, on an adventure with my car and was stuck with it for some time so the first one was i'd just been to milton Keynes Ooh. to go and watch a 4dx screening of spider-man no way home and Milton Keynes. Milton this is Keynes kind of, kind of fancy, place that the neighbor's it? cat would go, I think. <laughs> oh, yes, big time. He must have. I'm here, Milton Keynes, roundabout <laughs> central. All over. Well, the roundabouts are on the outside. In, in the center, it's all, it's all just a grid system. It's grids. It's, it's like America. I hate it. So God. many lanes and lights. You drive for like five seconds and then you stop at another set of lights. It's rubbish. Ugh. Rubbish. Trash city. <laughs> Fuck you if you're from Milton Keynes. How I dare you? I don't think you? anyone's going to argue against that, though. No, I think you're right. Milton Keynes Newtown, more like Milton Keynes Poo Town, am I oh, right? No. Yeah, that's it. They'll never recover from that. Have never. you guys ever watched 4DX? As no, aside? no. No. So 
<laughs> I've watched it a few times, but this time was particularly violent. If you've uh, if you've never done it, it's basically like those motion rides you get at theme parks, but yeah. someone does it for an entire movie. So you're sat in a, a row of four seats, and there's a cinema full of them, and they sort of vibrate and tilt and move around, and there's strobe effects and fog and oh wind, God. and it sprays like bits of water at you if you want to. You can turn that off if you want. Um, but... While I've seen, I uh, saw a couple of Star Wars movies in it when those were were going on, nice. and then Spider Man was just it was so so violent, like I was being thrown all over the place. It was like being in a car crash for two hours. <laughs> it was awful, <laughs> such an unpleasant way to experience that film. So don't do that. But if you get okay. the chance to do 4DX, it is it's quite an experience, even though that it's, it's like pretty fun. expensive. I saw a headline so, the other day that technology is being developed at like a lickable screen. Oh my can God. do flavors. It's like Willy Wonka, mm. isn't it? The snozberries taste like snozberries. Mm. And the tomato tastes like grandma. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. So that was, that'll it be 5DX like soon. Yes. You'll be able to just lick stuff. Oh, oh great. I can one taste space. Tom Holland. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, so I'd, I'd, I'm not spoiling things here. I, mm. Let's say I've already been in a car crash when I leave Milton Keynes. Mm. Oh, God. And. I'd say I'm a confident driver, but I'm I'm not hugely thrilled about driving in the dark on roads I'm not massively familiar with, especially if there's not many lights and people in significantly bigger and more powerful cars are more than happy to like drive right up my asshole with their lights on. Yeah. Uh, not a fan of that. So someone was doing that as I was making my way back from Milton Keynes back to my parents' house. And I thought what I'll do is I'll do a tactical on one of these roundabouts. I'll 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 indicate right go all the way around while they pass and then just carry on the same direction just right, so that they can yeah. get ahead. You know, little little tactical snoop and poop, you know. <laughs> and I got onto this roundabout that was in the middle of nowhere. And as I was going round, there's just a guy parked like horizontally blocking both of the lanes. Oh, God. And he's just right. stood next to his car. And I, I was completely taken aback because it's like 11.30 p.m. at this point. And I rolled down my window and just said, is is everything okay? And he said, can you help me push my car? And I was, oh, I was like, uh, no. sure, okay. So I put my hazards on and I got out and I tried to help him push his car and it was just sort of not really going anywhere. It was sort of rocking backwards and then just rolling back forwards again. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. Uh, and then a lorry pulled over, fortunately, and he got out and tried. we all tried to push it, but we got it a bit further, but same thing. And then I spotted his wheel and his front right wheel was at a right angle and almost oh. completely separate from the car. Jesus. Oh. So it like completely torn out. Uh, so the, I looked at the lorry driver and I just said, I'll, I'll call someone, I suppose. <laughs> and so the lorry driver went off. I called the police and asked them to come out because, you know, there's a car blocking two lanes of this roundabout. Mm. And, um, I, d I got talking to the guy who was just waiting by his car on a roundabout. And it turns out that a fox, so he says anyway, a fox ran out in front of his car and he swerved to avoid it, hit the sort of raised bit as you come up to the, the roundabout that separates the, the two lanes, uh, which is sort of like a raised curb pavement mm. bit, then flew over it and smashed into the roundabout. Fortunately, he was fine, but his car was absolutely fucked. Jeez. So I then had to just wait for the police to arrive and it took them about 45 minutes um and then they they just told me i could go and they were giving the guy a breathalyzer and i was like cool well that was exciting and it was fucking freezing and i got mud all over my shoes because i was just clomping around on top of this roundabout so i was out of the traffic um you got a but, smear of fox all over your shoes just <laughs> blood and just fur a bit of dead fo no i think the fox was fine there was no Good. sign of the fox Good. i was gonna Don't say what, you didn't mention a fox I, that sounds like a bullshit story to me yeah <laughs> well i think that's why he was breathalyzed but uh the, yeah uh, maybe he just fucked up and said oh it was a fox <laughs> <laughs> sure uh so then i went on my merry way and i thought well i can't possibly have any more car related adventures can i over this <laughs> christmas break but wait oh, as i was driving all. back north um, I went via uh, where you, Sam. Uh, you know Sam, right? We all know Sam. Sam yeah, from Coltonic. Sam, Sam Driver. Oh, Sam yeah. Driver. His partner Steph, who Peter, you've met. Yes. I'm not sure you have, Mikey. No, I've not had the pleasure yet. She's very nice. Yeah. Yes, lovely person. So I lovely picked up person. Steph 
uh, from where she lives because she was going north anyway and it was en route. So I thought, I'll pick up Steph. I, that that will be a, a nice thing to do and we can share a car ride and I can talk to a human being and that will be lovely. Uh, so I picked her up and then half an hour into the drive back north, ev- all the traffic came to a standstill and people started getting out of their cars and, you know, the, the middle-aged uh, dad thing. <laughs> where it's only the middle-aged dads initially, and they're just going from car to car, just going, oh, what do you think's happening then? Yeah. Ooh, Hands oh, on hips. Oh, oh yeah. Mm, 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 just sort of peering down the line of traffic. And I've been in, you know, we've all been in traffic jams before. I thought, whatever it is, it'll pass, and we'll be on the way, on our way in like 20 minutes or whatever. We were there for four hours. Oh, oh my God. God. Because someone had driven the wrong way down the A1. <laughs> oh, I heard, oh I heard about this. I actually heard about this. Yeah. Yeah, wow. they caused a big crash. There was an air ambulance. Everybody was Jesus. like, all the emergency vehicles were like flying down the hard shoulder. Um, and I drove that day, but we were going south and oh, we didn't actually... You may have gone past us. Yeah, well, maybe. Well, I don't know if it depends how far south you were, but um, we, I think just as we got to uh, my parents' place, um, we heard that that had happened um, and that they'd closed the road. Uh, so, um, yeah. yeah, we didn't oh, see it. Rough. I think we only just missed it. I mean, not, I mean, we're going the other way, so it wouldn't have affected us, but yeah. Mm. I've, I've never been in traffic like, like it. Eventually we did give up just waiting in the car and we got out and we went for a walk. Fortunately, we were pretty close to the front. So when things did open again, we were just funneled into the, you know, one lane and we were able to get past, but they kept all the lanes shut because the, there was just wreckage all over the road and i'm not honestly i'm not sure of the outcome i think the last i heard someone was in critical condition hopefully they're okay i Mm. genuinely don't know what what happened there but we walked down to the front and then we walked as far as we could be bothered in the other direction but people were walking their dogs Uh, (laughs) obviously people had babies and they were like taking them for a walk and trying to keep them satisfied um there was like a designated piss corner. Oh I saw several God. people go to the same like square patch of land to clearly go for a wee. Oh, um, it That'd was, be my nightmare. God, I, I know for mad. a fact I'd be sat there needing the biggest poo of my life after like half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I think some people did go for poos. I saw one man <laughs> sort of desperately trying to shield his wife from <laughs> hundreds of cars <laughs> with a towel, but it was very obvious what was going on. Um, <sighs> Fortunately, though, I was uh, I was coming back from my parents and I had a car. It wasn't full of, you know, the kind of food you would want to eat for dinner. But I had like miniature dime bars and Pringles and Jaffa <laughs> cakes and stuff in my boot. So snacks were OK. But I think we watched like two episodes of Futurama on my laptop before it died. I was very grateful to have Steph there because otherwise I was yeah, say, oh, yeah. mental. But I just couldn't believe that so much excitement could happen to me in like the the span of a week in my shit little car. All of it car related, and yeah. Steph being the partner of Sam Driver of all. Yeah. Oh, oh, look at that. perfect! <laughs> you would have thought she would have some sort of psychic clairvoyance immunity. Like turn off now, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> turn off now. Something bad is going to happen. <laughs> uh, but there we are. That's my thing. Anecdotal wow. car adventures, just sort of wow. waiting in my car Mm. i was gonna say that must have felt like the longest period of time ever i mean at least it was alleviated by having steph there so that's that's one benefit yeah yeah forever grateful for that but that is my thing (laughs) how exciting wow (laughs) boys would you like another question Mm -hmm. i would love one this one's coming at you from billy big bows but i don't i can't do a good scottish big boars yeah big boars Big, mm-hmm. mm, what do Scottish people say? Oh, hi, big boars. There we no, go. No, you can't do that. <laughs> That's bad. Oh, sorry, you can't Scotland, say that sorry. one. Oh. At Kermit the Pog on Twitter, uh, they ask, would you rather always be hungry or always need a jobby? Okay. <laughs> Pick this jobby purely because... being Scottish for uh, plops. Yes. Um... Picked it purely because I, 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 I love that word. Now, it, depends, it depends on the severity of them both, because they've both got their ups and downs. Yeah, and are we saying just the sensation of always needing a plops? Or, like, how, how debilitating is... That's true, actually. ...quote, unquote, yeah. always needing a plops? Like, do you just constant? If you're not sitting on the toilet, 
at, at any point are you just going to shit yourself or that's, yeah because mm. if it's just the feeling then how do you know when you actually need to go plop that sounds like a yeah, you have to make sure you are very regular <laughs> it's on the oh. hour time for my regularly sit down i don't like the idea of always needing a plop and no. as someone who is always hungry I feel again you're right it depends on the severity of the hunger if you are so hungry all the time that you have no energy because yeah. you're going to you know it doesn't say you can't eat in this hypothetical situation no. so let's say you're still getting the nutrients and you have the energy that you need you're just hungry all the time i'd much rather be hungry than sort of be debilitated by constantly needing the toilet yeah because again even if you don't physically have to go you would never know <laughs> You know, you might be you might be a regular person, like once a day, either you know, first thing in the morning or in the evening when you get home or whatever it is that you like to do. Uh, but on those odd occasions where you're you have an irregular motion, you know, it might be the middle of the day at the office, or it might be in the middle of the night you wake up. I don't think that's ever happened to me, but you never know. It might do. Uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't know, would you? Because you would like, well, I, this is I always feel like this, so you would yeah. potentially. Shit yourself. Yeah. Just because every day is fraught with fear. You'd Today never be able be to day. identify the signal as being yeah. a genuine need. It's so, like being immune to pain, right? And not knowing when you yeah. have actual mm. genuine injury or not. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think maybe always hungry. I mean, yeah. again, you, you would sort of have the same issue, but I guess that you would at least know whether you've eaten enough. Yeah. You know, you're not going to, like, accidentally starve to death, I don't think. I think there'd be... Um, It'd be a nuisance to never feel satiated. Like, like yeah, every meal would. would be a bit disappointing. Like, oh, that's, yeah, that's that's not done the trick. It would but suck. And you'd probably not... snack all the time as well, or you'd have yeah. to learn not to. But yeah, I, I think, yeah, they're just toilet business is is, is, is a risky business. So mm-hmm. keep me hungry, my friend. <laughs> there it is. We solved it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that one. Um, do you want another question or do you want to roll into a thing? Oh, another question. You're, you're uh, well, because I just figured today, with, with I that one, I figured I may as well have a, an extra one because <laughs> I didn't know how long that one could go on for. Sure, why not? That's another question. Very well, both of you. This one comes from Dave Cooper at Deluxe Man on Twitter. He says, in a parallel universe, you do shows for stuff. What's on your list? <laughs> so, were the Dave in this situation? What would you do? What would you take in exchange for doing things just the same i want enough juggling balls to teach a class of 20 yeah. you know? we all want that deluxe man was one of our pod squatters as well today hey mm. there you go wow double whammy look at you yeah hmm. uh hmm. Oh, i had an answer right why not just yeah i'll come i'll come do something if you you just give me a meal feed me you know feed me it's yeah, time for, you... it's time for lunch yeah, give me, give me, give me somewhere to sleep, somewhere to eat. I'll go anywhere, and I'll, I'll do whatever you want. I'll do anything, <laughs> anything. <laughs> as long as I've got sausages and mash in me. I'm hungry all the time. <laughs> <laughs> please, I'm, 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 I'm jumping around the country in pursuit of of a, of a nice meal. Please, someone. <laughs> fix I'm me. constantly hungry because I'm constantly shitting, I'm just <laughs> emptying myself. <laughs> Imagine having both. Oh, oh be like worse. That. Some people might. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um. Yeah. We were talking before we started recording the podcast about what we got for Christmas, and one of my more, uh, well, less less practical and more childhood wonder presents this year was um, a, a Lego set. I would probably do shows for Lego. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, that's pretty good. It's, and Lego's it's so expensive. expensive. As well. yeah, yeah, I don't want to have to pay for it myself. And I don't even. You could just say, "Well, why don't you do shows for money and then spend the money on Lego?" But I would feel like. I'm wasting this money on Lego. Yeah. Whereas if it was always just going to be for Lego, I would feel a lot better about it. You can never think, oh, I should, should have put this towards rent. Instead, it's just lovely bricks. Yeah, I'll just lovely build myself a house. Bricks. Lovely oh. bushy bricks. <laughs> I think I want to play garden games. Um, oh. cause that's, it's like I, being a kid, you used to always play like rounders and stuff and it, it, the opportunity doesn't really arrive any, arise anymore. So I think I'd like, uh, get, get me in your back garden with a game of rounders. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be pleased as punch. I'd, 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 I'd have to do a tour of all the British games, but cricket, um, uh, rounders and cricket are the only two I can think of right now. Bull. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Bull. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I thought you just said, okay. <laughs> just, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you would go, you would have to do a show first or or after, but you would turn up 
and play a, a lawn game with at someone's house and then do a show. Is yeah. That, is that the business model? Okay. Yeah, I think that just sounds like a bit of fun. Yeah. Yeah, why not? It's just not at all Fancy what I expected life. you to say. <laughs> I just got a sudden angering to play rounders. Now I just, yeah. yeah I, don't, I, don't, I don't know who to ask to like set that up now. I need Have I, some I, pims. I, oh, it'd be pims. lovely. See? Oh, it'd yeah. be lovely. Yeah. No, I've never had pims. Have you not? Oh, pins no. lemonade. Lovely. That's quite nice. Okay. Yeah. Well, this summer, when I, when I eventually get my arse up to, to Newcastle again, and we actually do some of those podcasts we've been meaning to do for like two years now. Yeah, we'll, we'll have, have a 50 nice... and 100 to do at this oh, rate. God. Yeah, we'll have a nice game around us and yeah. we'll give you a pims and uh, we'll have some Legos off to the side for Peter and oh, everyone will be happy. Be yeah. I'll bring yeah, a, doing shows for stuff. That's I'll bring a vegan KFC. Oh yeah! Oh my god! Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, wrong, the non-vegan as the cake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for old times' sake. <laughs> um, would you like me to do my thing? Yes. 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 <laughs> well, the answer was no. I just yes. don't do it this week. <laughs> it's twenty twenty-two, and a new year means new opportunities, new beginnings. So, in the spirit of things, I'm on the hunt for a new job. And I think I found the best one going. Ooh. Welcome to the thrilling world of garden hermits. Okay. <laughs> oh, see, I know a bit about garden hermits. I Mikey, think I this might is exciting. Well. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> ready to learn more. <laughs> exciting is a uh, certainly a word for it. It's it's <laughs> so this is um, a genuine old job that used to exist and still exists to a certain degree. So are you all ready to learn? Oh, about I didn't the, know the that. Of, yeah, yeah. So it still find exists. out at the end. Oh, mm. spoilers. Okay. While some gardeners might now throw a gnome statue among their flowers and shrubberies, back in the 18th century, wealthy estate owners were hiring real people to dress as druids, grow their hair long, and not wash for years. So I'm already ticking one of those boxes pretty big. These hired hermits would lodge in shacks, caves, and other hermitages constructed in a rustic manner in rambling gardens. And a hey, garden, I can play my garden games. I don't think hermits are actually allowed to do that. Point of hermits is you just sit and ponder and yeah. that's it. That's your existence. True hermits, those who shun society and live in isolation to pursue higher spiritual enlightenment, had been a part of the religious landscape of Britain for centuries. The trend of adding hermits to estate grounds for aesthetic purposes arose in the 18th century out of a naturalistic influence in British gardens. Famed landscape gardener Lancelot Capability Brown. That's a hell of a middle name. Wow. Capability <laughs> Brown, Capability. yeah. Lancelot Brown. <laughs> He's quite a famous garden guy. You go to these National Trust properties and they're like, yeah, this this garden is a Capability Brown. It's like, oh, oh is it? Oh, okay. okay. Just oh, done well. one of those in the in the toilets around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Good. <laughs> He was a leading proponent of this naturalistic approach which shunned the French style of formal gardens of old. Think neatly trimmed lawns, elaborately shaped box hedges, and geometric gravel paths. <laughs> Gross. And it ditched those in favour of serpentine paths that meandered past romantic-looking lakes, rustic clumps of trees, and artfully crumbling follies. Just does sound quite nice. Very British, like mm. derelict, <laughs> overgrown. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Lovely. This new style of garden frequently also featured a picturesque hermitage constructed of brick or stone, or even gnarled tree roots and branches. Many were decorated inside with shells or bones to create a suitably atmospheric retreat. <laughs> Give me five minutes, darling. I'm going to sit with my bones. <laughs> See, finally, a use for the KFC leftovers. <laughs> yeah. There's one not so far far from us, uh, Ben. Oh, There's really? a stately home that's got a, a shell grotto in it. Yeah. Ooh. It's got all these uh, just regular kind of seashells all stuck stuck all over the wall. Oh, Ooh, cute. I want to see one now. This has piqued my interest in them because it's, it's I imagine it just being like a small little hovel, but yeah, like fun. And then, then imagine sitting in there for like seven years. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a lot less fun. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yes. Gordon Campbell of the University of Leicester published The Hermit in the Garden, From Imperial Rome to Ornamental Gnome. Very mm. good title. That's <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> and it was the first book on the subject. And he wrote, 
recruiting a hermit wasn't always easy. Sometimes they were agricultural workers and they were dressed in a costume, often in a druid's costume. There was no agreement on how druids dressed, but in some cases they wore what we would call a dunce's cap. <laughs> oh, that feels mean. Just check out this dunce at the end of the garden. I've managed to trick him into sitting, sitting here for years. Ah, fool. As Campbell cites from an advertisement referenced in Sir William Gell's A Tour in the Lakes, made in 1797, the hermit is never to leave the place or hold a conversation with anyone for seven years, during which he is neither to wash himself or cleanse himself in any way whatever, oh. but, but is to let his hair and nails both, both on hands and feet grow as long as nature will permit them. Mm, what a lovely little stinky man at the end of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> you want to meet my stink boy? <laughs> don't try to talk what? to him though he's not allowed he's got a hat <laughs> look, at, look at my stink boy surrounded by bones I did this to him <laughs> others ask that their hermits not wear shoes or even to entertain party guests with personal oh well, I've, I've run on the sentence there there's supposed to be a little pause others ask that their hermits not wear shoes or even entertain party guests wait does that mean that they're not supposed to entertain party guests with personalised poetry or that they no I think that they yeah they ask them to do that Okay, that makes yes, sense. To not wear shoes and to entertain. There we go. Yes. Thank you. So personalised poetry or the serving of wine. Yeah, that makes sense. It seems like a whimsical garden feature, does it? It sounds like abuse. Yeah. <laughs> it's not whimsical. That's a man's life. Exploitative. <laughs> but in fact, it was all about that most celebrated of Georgian England emotions, melancholy. Introspection and somberness of spirit were prized among the elite, and the roles they asked their hermits to play embodied this. In 1784, in the 1784 Guide to the Hawks, Hawkstone Estate in Shropshire, belonging to Sir Richard Hill, describes its resident hermit. You pull a bell and gain admittance. The hermit is generally in a sitting posture, with a table in front of him, on which is a skull, the emblem of mortality, an hourglass, a book... And a pair of spectacles. Nice to get books. That's nice. That's Ooh. nice. The Venerable Barefooted Father. <laughs> that's a good wrestler name. <laughs> <laughs> Whose name is Francis, if awake, always rises up at the approach of strangers. He seems about... I thought you meant his name was only Francis when he was <laughs> awake. <laughs> <laughs> when he's asleep, we call him Dunce. <laughs> uh. Oh, dear. He always rises up at the approach of strangers. He seemed about 90 years of age, yet has all his sense to admiration. He is tolerably conversant and far from being unpolite. At other hours, the Hawkstone Hermit was replaced with a mannequin. Oh. <laughs> do, do that all the oh. time. Do they just send him home at night time? Is it like a day job then? He's a to day, his day house. <laughs> Part-time hermit, yeah. <laughs> Some estate owners who couldn't afford or did not want a real-life hermit sometimes set up the hermitage as if it as if its resident had just left. <laughs> <laughs> they create like a little diaphragm of like, oh, he spilled his juice. And all. What's he like? <laughs> Others used the hermitages themselves. Some took to this. Some took this to even greater extremes, putting a dummy or automation in the hermit's place. One such example was found at the Wood House in Womburn. Womburn, as I pronounce it. It's, that's how it's spelled Not sure. in Staffordshire, Wombard. England, <laughs> where the Wimbles Womble. <laughs> the Wimbles, what are the, the Wombles. Yeah, the Wimbles. What did the yeah. Wombles do? The Wombles Wimble? No, they don't. No, the Wimbles Wombled, I'm fairly sure. <laughs> the Wimb <laughs> yeah, the Wombles of Wimbledon wi wo Wombled. Wobbling. No. Yeah. Uh, wob wobbling Wombles. In yeah, I'm, I'm, this, this is going to hang me up. <laughs> Sorry for England. <laughs> Wherein the well, oh god, I've lost myself. No. One such example was found at the Woodhouse in Womburn, Wom <laughs> Staffordshire, England, where in the mid 18th century Samuel Hellier added a mechanical hermit that was said to move and give a lifelike impression. Very good. Oh. Uh, with the new fashion for building hermitages in country estates, the next logical step was to populate them with an actual hermit. It's not clear who first started the trend, but at some point in the early 18th century, having a resident hermit quietly contemplating existence and a occasionally sharing some golden nugget of wisdom with visitors, came to be seen as a must-have accessory for the perfect garden ideal. Real hermits were hard to find, though, so wealthy landowners had to get creative. Some put advertisements in the press, offering food, lodging and a stipend for those willing to adopt a life of solitude. The Honourable Charles Hamilton placed one such ad after buying Paynes Hill Park, 
and, ex and extensively remodeling the grounds. Hamilton created a lake, grottoes, a Chinese bridge, temple, and a hermitage on his estate, then placed mm -hmm. an ad for a hermit to live there for seven years in exchange for £700. In today's money, that's $77,000, which is not bad, not great. Wow. Considering that's like, what, seven grand a year? No, 10 grand a year, 11 grand a year. You could, you could do worse for sitting around doing nothing all day. The hermit was not allowed to speak to anyone, cut their hair, or leave the estate. Unfortunately, the successful applicant was discovered in the local pub just three weeks after being appointed. <laughs> oh, busted. <laughs> Little git. What's he like? He was relieved of his role and not replaced, perhaps demonstrating the difficulty of attracting a serious hermit. <laughs> Today, the fascination with hermits still exists. <laughs> Sorry, we end. need a serious hermit. Please, no time wasters. <laughs> no time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but what makes a serious hermit? I guess one that doesn't go to the pub. Yeah. I don't blame him, though. I think after three weeks, I'd be dying for a pint as well. It's kind of strange to be putting a job ad out saying, we're looking for someone who isn't going to do anything. They're just going to sit around, you know, not not really, you know, just, just do nothing, please. And they really yeah. struggled. Whereas, yeah. you know, nowadays... It's almost the opposite effect. <laughs> oh, oh dear. Well, speaking of nowadays, today the fascination with hermits still exists, albeit in uh, far smaller, smaller communities. At the end of April 2017, a new hermit, 58-year-old Stan Voyatrecht, moved into a hermitage in Salfelden, Austria, high up in the mountains. 50 mm. people applied for this position despite the lack of internet, running water or heating not to mention the fact that the hermit is not compensated monetarily at all for the time during this period the hermitage which has been continuously inhabited for the last 350 years which is quite impressive Ooh. jesus welcomes visitors to come and enjoy a spiritual conversation with their resident hermit and expects plenty of guests that sounds a bit more tolerable tolerable mm. you know you're in austria got a nice it's a, nice, it's a nice little wooden cabin as well it's quite nice you've got good views um you can get milk and, there Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. At the bottom it sounds like, pretty um, grim to not have any heating, I think. It sounds sounds not high up I in mean, the mountains. Yeah. Yeah. He seems to be quite happy about it though. Um this is a quote from him. I thought I had no chance for a Trecht, who comes from near Brussels, told the Austria Press Agency. When I read about this uh, Salfelden hermitage, I thought to myself, that's the place for me. <laughs> he said he had long dreamed of becoming a hermit, but the opportunity had never arisen. And now he's living his dream. Damn, is there a photo of him? Yes, there is. Uh, let me, let me, let me get a Google. Let Surely get... anyone can become a... Was it mean the opportunity never arose? <laughs> Paid, perhaps? I don't know. Yeah, I suppose. But he did this one for paid. free. He could have just built a little shed for himself for and done it. Oh, man. Yeah, it's what? not that they weren't paid for any. I guess they just get... Maybe they get <laughs> sent food and stuff. Whereas, you know, if you did it yourself, you wouldn't be provided with that. Well, he's true. doing hermit for food, isn't he? Mm. For stuff. Wow. Looks like him. That's a good shows. hermit. He's he looks like he's a good modern hermit. Him hermity already, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it looks, uh, it look, it's got the. I mean, he's just got a sink and a. Is it got a sink? No, what the hell is that? That's a. That's like a wood fire oven. God, yeah, this building's old, so it's all just. Yeah. Well, it's cozy. I'll give it that. Well, he's mm. happy. He's living. He's living his dream. And he is. I'd, I'd like to go visit him one day and ask him how he's getting on. <laughs> Hey, you got to have something. And look at this. Hey, look at this man. He's achieved it. What have you done, Ben? Uh, oh, that felt true. weird. Sorry, Ben. You've, done, you've, you've achieved oh. a lot in your life, Ben. I'm sorry. I feel bad. Not enough. <laughs> this guy was definitely partly hired because he's got a great big bushy white beard. <laughs> yeah. Like if, if he didn't have that, I bet he wouldn't have got the job. Hang on, is he? Oh, no. Did you say he's in his 50s? Yes, I think he's like 58. Yeah, 58. Man, that dude has aged fast, hasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> He's 50 years. Yeah. Looks, well, yeah. He looks I like he's in his late 60s, maybe. Early 70s. <laughs> uh, I'd say mid-60s. Mid yeah. yeah, he doesn't look as in his 50s at all. No. You're right. No. But mm. we wish him all the best up there in yeah, his Austrian cabin. It's that harsh hermit living, I think, maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I'll be applying for his position when he uh, decides to move on. Good. Mm. So you yeah, should. Fantastic. That's a summary of hermits. Ooh, Love it. Lovely. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, quite Michael. All right. Uh, question time. Da, da, da. Let's see what we've got. Oh. <laughs> I've got so many in front of me, I didn't whittle them down. Now I'm having them. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, let's go for a nice one. 
Uh, John Gomez at John Johns Eight on Twitter asks, favorite bit of media last year? Movie, show, album, game, book? I guess since we'll carry on the theme of of uh, contemplating the year that's passed. Any highlights for you boys? I think we might talk a little bit about this recently, but there weren't many films it, last year. I don't think I think I went to the cinema twice. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go. Yeah. Off. Hmm. Spider-Man was very good. That was right. I did enjoy Spider-Man. Some recency yeah. bias there, but Spider-Man was great. Uh, I enjoyed, I think it was season three of What We Do in the Shadows. I thought that was fantastic. Oh. Comedy television. I really mm-hmm. enjoyed it. I've yet to um, delve into that TV show. I think I watched 10 minutes of the first episode and got put off because it wasn't exactly like the film. Right. I, need to, <laughs> I need to stop that mindset and enjoy it for its own thing. It does the film justice, I promise you. It, obviously, really? the first okay. episode of anything, especially with such a high concept of what if, um, what about a mockumentary about vampires, but they're idiots? Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's really good really really funny and i've uh, heard good things about it it doesn't replace the film at all it just it's in the same it runs parallel or not parallel but it's sort of set after the events of the film so it's not like they're pretending it doesn't exist or retconning it or anything like that there there is crossover i'll say that much Mm, Mm. i will stick it on the docket to watch it's good good stuff i think favorite film i watched last year was last night in soho the edgar wright horror it's a bit spooky for me Oh, it's 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 good. It's fun, spooky though. It's psychological, weird, fuckery, spooky. Not not jump scary spooks. Oh, so sounds I don't even worse it. for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. Uh, it's like a thrill ride. It's very like some really mind bending uh, kind of visuals in it. It's very very fun. And uh, for something that wasn't released in twenty twenty one, I finally got into Line of Duty. And five of you watched it. No, I haven't. I've heard no, it all but about again, it. I've, I know it was very popular, particularly last year. Yeah, I I I, I hadn't. That. Like, I, for some reason, I just don't remember ever hearing about it, maybe except for like a clip or two on Harry Hill's TV perp years ago. Right, yeah. But, and yeah, like after all the hype the last season got, we recently, me and Claudia recently got into it and Jesus Christ, it's so good. God, nice. like very good police procedural drama, but like not like CSI, like actually good. I yeah. recommend it. People were a bit disappointed with the, like when it was being talked about last year was was because like the finale happened, like, I think the yeah. very last episode and- wasn't it a little bit controversial? I think some people were a bit, you know, they thought, oh, all that for for nothing or I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess you've not seen it yet, so. No, I'm midway through it at the minute, so I I, I might report back with my feelings on it. Yeah, but... I hope you like it. I think a lot of people did, but I, I know it was, well, like I say, it was controversial. It kind of split the crowd, I think, so I'll have to see how it goes down with you. I'm generally very easily pleased. My, it's just terrible. I just kind of, like, if if you put something in front of me and it manages to grab my attention for like five minutes, I'm like, oh, this is great. I'm loving it. Like just flashing lights and li- lights and colors. I'm great. Oh wow, this is great. Wow, that's usually mm-hmm. how I rate something. So I I just fail to comprehend anything remotely like context, like um, like sub subtext, like little little bits. It all goes over my head. I'm just like, yeah, I had fun watching that. Things moved mm-hmm. about in front of me. Great. I'm like a baby. <laughs> Give me baby sensory videos. And jingle I'll be happy. jingle. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Um, for me, I didn't, I only went to the cinema once last year, and that was to see the, the 20th anniversary of um, the Philosopher's Stone. Um, and that was right at the end of the year as well. So I only saw one new film last year, I think, which is mad when I think about it. I don't know how I went 12 months without, maybe I'm thinking of, maybe I'm forgetting something earlier. Oh, I saw Godzilla versus Kong. Um, oh yeah <laughs> not, not at the cinema but I, that was a new film that i saw but um yeah so i don't know about films but um i i mean i again this is kind of a recency thing but like a couple of things i watched at the tail end of the year on streaming services uh i really liked the second series of tiger king um, oh really yeah oh i, I thought it was it. really good oh, oh, oh you hated it i absolutely despised it i thought it was rubbish Really? Yeah. It just felt, I don't know, it just felt very empty and vapid. I mean, the, the first season was anyway, but the second one was just like, oh man, this there's nothing of substance here. Well, I should say I watched that and at the same, well, not at the same time, but immediately after I watched the Doc Antle spinoff um, oh, documentary yeah. that they did. And so I'm kind of, I might be conflating the two in my head, but that, that combined viewing experience of those two series, I really enjoyed. Um, yeah. So I'd recommend that as well. It's kind of, it's a different thing, but it's similar, just kind of 
arsehole animal keepers in America being weird. Um, yeah, yeah. It's fun for that bit. I, 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 I think the first season was like a proper landmark cultural moment in terms yeah. of like just this shared, what the fuck is going on here? Like, mm. God, I don't think any piece of media will have, ever have that impact again than, than Joe Exotic abusing tigers. That's yeah. amazing. And it just came at the start of lockdown and everyone watched it. And I'm yeah, it was I quite, missed quite it. a thing. I feel like I really missed a moment there. Oh, you did I, I watched like half of one episode in maybe a few months after it was super popular. And I just, I just, I didn't get it and maybe it's just because I didn't ride the same wave as everyone else and there was no way it could live up to the expectations that people had set I don't know I think the hook is like if you make it to the end of the first episode yeah I can't remember exactly what the uh, basically each episode is 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 really well kind of written and directed where there is a big kind of kind of uh, cliffhanger at the end of each episode and I remember sitting through the first one thinking oh people are talking about this show what is it and then right at the end i was like oh okay yeah and then from that point on i was just addicted we were watching two or three episodes in one go in like evening to evening um and they're like an hour each but we just couldn't stop watching it yeah really recommend stick with it for the entire episode because it just it just barrels out of control like it's absolutely yeah. insane okay so. i like the memes um, i enjoyed the memes <laughs> yeah the memes, the memes were good, good. yeah <laughs> Uh, other than that, though, getting a, trying to get a pardon from Trump with his limousine outside yes, the jail. Yes, was Christ. waiting for him. He not even had a pardon yet, and he had a limo waiting outside. It was Jesus. madness. Oh, God. So good. Um, one for perhaps one for you and Claudia, Mikey. If you've not watched it already, oh. uh, we sat on this for ages. We'd just seen it was on Netflix, and we kept kind of thinking, "Oh, we'll watch that at some point." It's called Sophie: A Murder in West Cork, right? As in in Ireland. Yeah. And it's about this woman, um, this French lady who goes to live in Cork just because she likes the the countryside and the it's in this like really remote village, and she gets murdered, and the the story around I don't know why this this series didn't make more you know not quite Tiger King levels but why it didn't hit that kind of uh, popularity because it's I just could not stop watching it I found it so fascinating. The guy who they think did it is just super odd. And he's sort of like denying that he did it. Uh, and they've got him on the show. They're interviewing him and stuff. And then they're talking to all these other people and they're saying, why do you think that he did it? Like he was investigated by the police. And at first they 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 dropped it. They, you know, they, they didn't think it was him. And these people are like, because he said he did it. He was going around the village telling everyone that he'd done it. And then it just gets weirder and weirder. And they're saying like, yeah, he used to walk around and he had like this stick that it was like his his like magic stick that he used to have. <laughs> and one guy saw him in the middle of the night howling at the moon. Oh, and what a legend. Okay. Yeah. It's just this really odd man who very clear. Well, I mean, he's innocent until proven guilty, but, uh, you know, it really seems like he had he something to do with this. Yeah, it paints a picture and he's a, a, a very unusual character. And they've just got him on the show and he's like doing talking heads and and defending himself and trying to explain some of these really weird things where he's just outright admitted to like 11 year old children that like, oh, yeah, I murdered her in that house and stuff. It's like really strange. Um, Interesting. Okay, my interest has peaked. Yeah, I I couldn't stop watching it. It was it was it was fascinating. Thank you. Um, Sick. Yeah. Nice. Peter, would you like to present your thing to the class? Sure. Um, so I have a news story, and this this was written. I found it in my list of podiats things um, that I intend to bring along to episodes, and uh, it's a, a recent addition to the list because um, it's an article from the Telegraph uh, from the tail end of December. Um, so it's a, a recent story, but I don't remember despite it being added to the list so recently. I don't remember whether I saw it and just added it to my list or if someone sent it to me on Twitter or something. So apologies if someone did indeed send this to me. Um, I have forgotten. So if you maybe just tell me again (laughs) online, I will will maybe give you a a shout out next time or something. Anyway, here we go. Uh, This is according to the Daily Telegraph. Um, it was written by Max Stevens and Hannah Furness. Oh, oh it's a double, a double effort. Uh, 28th of December, 2021. Psycho Squirrel, 
that went nuts biting <laughs> residents is caught. Wow. Guys, it's spreading. A, it went nuts. That's a title. <laughs> it went nuts. Very clever there. Bit of wordplay. Um, the psycho seagull has an ally, yeah. I think. <laughs> so... It has all the makings of a horror film, albeit a fairly low-budget one. Residents in a small Welsh community were left housebound after being terrorised by a rampaging squirrel which injured at least 21 people. God, wow. The squirrel, condemned as a psycho by at least one of its victims, had attacked pensioners, children and pets in Buckley, Flintshire, North Wales. I don't know why I said shire like an American, but anyway... (laughs) Uh, with 18 injured within 48 hours oh, over God. the weekend. Eight, Locals, that's He's on a it is. It's madness. Locals reported gruesome injuries, with one young man being chased down a road and parents keeping their young children and pets inside to protect them. <laughs> He's not a friendly-natured squirrel, I'm afraid, one grandmother, <laughs> one grandmother said. He is a rogue one. <laughs> one neighbour wrote on social media... Dare not go out if in my house as it's lurking. Oh, hey, good. Good. <laughs> that is one gangster squirrel, said another with grudging admiration. <laughs> dozens of local uh, dozens of locals reported bleeding from cuts, uh, cuts to their hands and heads after being bitten, with some requiring tetanus shots. At least 21 people have been hurt since Thursday, December 23rd, with 18 presenting with injuries within 48 hours over the Christmas weekend. On Monday, December 27th, Corinne Reynolds, 65, took matters into her own hands and laid a humane trap to curtail the reign of terror. However, the RSPCA confirmed to The Telegraph on Tuesday that it had removed the grey squirrel from Mrs. Reynolds' care and had been bound by law, which the charity said it did not agree with, to put the animal to sleep. Current wildlife and environmental legislation makes it an offence to release a trapped grey squirrel into the wild or keep one in captivity. So if you catch one, you have to kill it. Is, oh God. is the law. Right. Jesus. Kind of crazy. Wow. Uh, a- any grey squirrel must be humanely destroyed, according to the British the British Association for Shooting and Conservation. A spokesman for the RSPCA said... <laughs> Sorry, those are two words which shouldn't go together. Yeah, shooting and shooting conservation. And conservation. <laughs> <laughs> a spokesman for the RSPCA said, we were incredibly sad to have to put this squirrel to sleep, but we're left with no choice due to legislation changes in 2019 making it illegal to release grey squirrel gray squirrels back into the wild we do not agree with this law and opposed it but legally we have to comply there are numerous ways to humanely deter grey squirrels and we would urge people not to trap them as it's now illegal to release them into the wild and the only option is to put them to sleep um, what, a, what a job's worth like well you've caught that squirrel I have to call this in and report it just just let it out of the box and let it go yeah, don't tell yeah. it that's all you got to do <laughs> yeah um so, as I got the, to this point in the article, I thought sounds like they're going to they're, they're winding down now. They're padding for time or for for word count. But uh, it continues. Mrs. Reynolds, that's the lady who caught the squirrel, had been feeding the animal since the summer, and it made regular trips to her garden ever since, looking for food and shelter. Aww. But after being bitten on the hand herself, she read multiple reports of squirrel attacks on her local Facebook group. Mrs. Reynolds, who has seven children, nine and uh, nine grandchildren, and works as a home carer, had said he started attacking people who are just taking their recycling bags to the bin, and they're quite gruesome injuries. I'm starting to wonder if he's got something going on inside his head, like a tumor. <laughs> oh, oh not a squirrel tumor. A squirrel tumor making them mad, you know. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, Mrs. Reynolds, for the impression that I'm continuing to do here. The speed of it is frightening. He dashes from the roof of my garden shed to me, but when he does it to everyone else, he bites them. It's been... its He's even bit an elderly person in the area. No, oh not the area. God, not the area. Oh, Boys no. in my area. Wait, it sounds worse than it is. I think she just means an elderly person in the area. Oh, oh, the, the, oh, yeah, I know. But the oh. first time I read it, I was like, oh, goodness Damn. me. <laughs> Steady on. Uh, on one occasion, it chased a lad down the road and then uh, and and then dad was left with a bloody cut on his head. 
<laughs> I guess that, that that boy's dad. Right. Um, she added, "He's now attacking people for no reason whatsoever. The front tooth breaks the skin in breaks the skin in quite a lethal way. I still have a scar on my finger." Mrs. Reynolds said she init- she initially tried to contact the RSPCA, but had no response from them before calling a local out of hours vet to take it away for one hundred and ten pounds. With neighbours chipping in, oh. <laughs> couldn't wait to get rid of this squirrel. Uh, Cherie Robinson, 42, who was bitten on her finger by the squirrel on Thursday morning, said, This squirrel is not very nice at all. It's a nutty squirrel. He's a bit of a psycho. He's had five or six of my neighbours. He had me. He he had me uh, when collecting my recycling bags. He jumped out from behind my green bin. So maybe he was trying to get food and thought I was going to take it away. Let's just say it had me good and proper. I've got a five-year-old and she usually plays out back with her friends. But I've had to say, sorry, babe, you can't go out till something's (laughs) happened with it. Sorry, babe. Sorry, babe. (laughs) Scott Felton, granite technician, 34... Jeez, what a job. Said he'd been unaware of the squirrel's reputation until he was having a cigarette outside his door on Boxing Day. I crouched down and this squirrel came out of nowhere and jumped onto my garden table, he said. After that, he jumped onto my arm and bit me on my hand before I even had a chance to get it off. It all happened so quick. Um, And then the article abruptly ends with... (laughs) Grey squirrels were first released into the UK from North America in 1876, and now the Wildlife Trust estimates there are 2.5 million of them in Britain. Damn, damn. Oh, Boo, Grey look squirrels. Out Dave Benson. Yeah, indeed. That um, would be terrifying. That's the thing with like small mammals, like squirrels, rats, and mice, is that they're erratic. It's mm. they're not scary just in presence. It's just the way they are. Like they just they just dart around with no control, no sense. They could pounce at any moment. That, yeah, that does that's sound the terrifying. Thing. When you see them in the park or, you know, up a tree, a ways away, you just look and you think, okay, yeah, it's just a squirrel. That's nice, a bit of wildlife. But if a squirrel was on you, just dashing all over your body, God. you know, that's, that's pretty grim. Yeah. Um, that's how zombies happen. It yeah. is. Yeah. Psycho squirrel started a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> so, um, I mean, just got to look out now for more and more psycho wildlife. I think yeah. it's spreading. It is. Maybe the uh, seagull bit the squirrel, and that's oh, how it, it caught the psycho. <laughs> Maybe. Imagine if that became like a pandemic, a pandemic of rabid animals. That would be the end time, surely. Like, I wouldn't a, go outside if it was like 10 squirrels there. That'd be terrifying. Wasn't there like a, an 80s horror movie about that? I can't remember what it was called, but it was like all the animals were attacking people. Um, I can only think of the one with the giant rabbits. Have you seen clips from that one? <laughs> no, no. Giant no, rabbits. So. Uh huh. There's that New Zealand zombie one where where the sheep Ooh, black sheep yeah that's it oh yeah I had that on DVD as a as a kid as a teen I was told that it oh you love Shaun of the Dead you'll love this and I didn't enjoy it as much as no it Shaun wasn't that Dead. good someone bought it for me for my birthday oh, I found the film it's a uh, Night of the Leapers it's it's great it's just miniature sets with bunny rabbits running around them it looks like great fun. Oh, oh wow, I love that. <laughs> there was a wow. I also had a, a VHS of a Thunderbirds episode where they had giant alligators, which was done in exactly the same way. They used baby alligators oh, on miniature sets and they were just like trashing houses and stuff. Did they ever rip great. apart a puppet? I guess you can't have that on a kid's TV show. What am I talking about? Um, I think they, they killed a couple of people, but I don't oh, think you God. really saw it oh, okay. like happening that much. But um yeah. Uh What's this? Uh, I'm trying to remember the name of this animal attack movie, but uh, by all means, move on to um, the final question or or the uh, the ending of the podcast, the outro. Oh, I do have one last question coming from Stephen Norrie, agent of GIRL at Stephen Norrie on Twitter. Despite of it being one of the shittiest tourist places ever. Madame Tussauds have given you the keys to the waxy castle and are allowing you to render, render any given celebrity in any given scenario you desire for the poor paying public to forever see. Who and what do you go for? Dave Benson I've Phillips getting got- shit on by a seagull. Wow. Oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. I want that. The horror, the, the fear. 
and the sort of the psychotic look of the sea. Really, it's the seagull who's getting the waxwork here. You can have just anyone portray Dave, I think. Uh, or like, <laughs> I, basically, I want all the budget. I want 90% of the budget to go into the seagull and 10% into Dave. So it just it just bears a <laughs> passing resemblance to Dave Benson Phillips. This is, this is a mural celebrating the seagull, not Dave. Uh, but I want, yeah, I want can, this scenario. You could amp that up as well. You could have like the seagull rigged up to wires so it like actually flies around, oh, have some man. speakers in there. So you get like the car, car. So good. That'd be good, yeah. Could you have, um, as part of the sort of the set dressing in the background, could you have Dave's car with shit and vomit on it <laughs> yeah because that was the, the cause of the uh the whole for a car it it shot on his uh on his car and it, oh no that was on the show wasn't it and then he shooed it away and then it like threw up on his car i think <laughs> there's dvds in there and juggling balls on the yeah. back seat <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we haven't left him out of it at all no. have we no. <laughs> it'll never change here he is yeah this idea popped in my head and now my brain refuses to think of anything else. So I'm sorry, but um, I want known foot fetishist Quentin Tarantino to be documented just just looking at some feet. Just There's, there's a famous photo of him where it's like as an actor um, like with the feet like resting like in a car with the feet poking out the window and Quentin's there with like a little viewfinder like right up in the feet. Oh, for God's I think sake. that... <laughs> Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, I just, I just, I just think that's eternally funny and gross, and I want that. I want to see that in person, and just, maybe, to, just to shudder at the thought of it. Maybe he's laying prone on his stomach with a pair of binoculars <laughs> pointed at basically anyone who walks past feet. So he's just. He's, <laughs> oh, that'd be brilliant! Yeah. yeah. So you become the one so he's who's just watching. staring at your feet. Anyone who comes by. Oh, look at that! Every time you walk past. Oh wow! Look at that picture there, Mikey. That's great. <sighs> Cheese block the, the, the telescopic <laughs> lens. <laughs> Getting a good look at them tootsies. Oh, <laughs> Quentin. Oh, Every Jesus. time you walk past him prone on the floor, it activates a little motion sensor and it just goes, I'm shutting your butt down <laughs> over and over again. Yeah. Oh. Um man, I I would like um Oh it's, it's, I've the sky's the limit. The sky is the limit. That's the problem. I would like a waxwork oh. of um, Otis the Aardvark and the neighbor's cat because, by all accounts, they are rotting in Kirsten O'Brien's <laughs> attic right now. Oh, no. Uh, well, Otis is, and the neighbor's cat. I mean, we saw that he's not in good nick at all, um, but uh, he's he's not quite degraded just yet. But there were two or three Otis the Aardvark puppets sort of in use and uh kirsten o'brien has one she was one of the cbbc presenters for those who don't know and she presented smart as well the art program mm. and uh she got to keep one and apparently it's just a kind of pile of degraded felt now oh, in her so loft sad. so i want him to be preserved um in wax form mm-hmm. that'd be cute that's a good idea i'm just looking at I, I I don't think I've ever encountered or it's the Aardvark before. I'm just oh, looking really? at a picture he of it like, and He was my hero <laughs> as a kid. Really? <laughs> oh, he was my favorite. Horrifying. He was uh, certainly my favorite CBBC presenter. You wanted presenter. to be like Otis when you grew up. <laughs> I did, yeah. Um, I was really sad when they retired him. And he was puppeteered and voiced by the same guy, by the, the neighbor's cat. Oh, there he is in the photo. Is. That's him. Hey, so cool. Go. He is, is that, so hang cool. Hang on, Peter. Is that who you sort of modern, uh, sort of modern, modeled your fashion sense on? I've seen you wear that shirt. Otis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's entirely possible. Yeah, I think may- maybe so. so. Maybe you did. I mean, I don't wear the cap. No, you don't sort of wear golf the cap. visor. You do but... wear the big fluffy ears, though. Yeah. I do. Yeah. And I eat ants you do. as well. Very Delicious. Very long tongue. Very weird, thin, long yeah. tongue. Don't yeah. Do it. It's magic. Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe that's I, just in, to, in the back of my mind somewhere. Yeah. To be fair, I'd love to see that rendered in wax because like, that's, that's a feat of artistic it skill is, yeah. to do fuzz with wax. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I guess they just use actual fur because they don't make the hair out of wax, do they? They just use actual hair. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess just better fur that's not going to degrade. I think it's um, the fur on puppets is like attached to foam and it's the foam that breaks down and then the whole puppet just loses its structural integrity. Uh, so 
I think the neighbor's yeah. cat degrading kind of fits his aesthetic, though. So I'm not. I'm not yeah, I think he just mm. he just looked like he'd aged like a fine wine. I think. Yeah. So um, uh, yeah, here's a picture of wine. Thunderbirds' attack of the oh, alligators. I remember oh, this episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks great. Actually, wow, it was pretty cool. Yeah, those Aww, those puppets didn't fella. stand a chance. No, to be fair, absolutely not. <laughs> well. There we are, everybody. That's the first episode of 2022. Thank you for the questions, Mikey, and thank you for your things, boys. It's quite all right. Thank you. There is, as I said at the start of the podcast, no what happened four years ago in Vidiot's land just yet, but we'll get to that in February. Soon enough. Uh, Mikey? Hello. Is there some sort of shop? Oh, you're absolutely right. If you're on the hunt for wares of the Vidiot's variety, you can head over to eBay.com <laughs> where someone was selling a used Vidiot shirt. And uh, <laughs> yep. uh, we, we were planning to spend our, our pod squad money wisely and buy it for ourselves. But um, someone else got in there before us. And so some lucky listener, I hope you're listening, has um, just paid through the arse for an old shirt. <laughs> well, well, actually, it was new in, in wrapper as well. So was? someone had bought it and never even bothered to wear it. Yeah. Thank you for the sale. But if though. you don't... Yeah, cheers. <laughs> uh, but if you don't want to resort to eBay, you can head to store.yogscast.com where you can find an array of Yogscast related goodies such as ooh, a sharky plushie ooh, or a briny mm. bunny scene pillow ooh, or even best, better yet, the video section where we've got t-shirts, mug and hoodie. Uh, let Lots of stuff for you to wear and or use. It's It's great. It's a great time. Um, but you're stuck paying full price because discount codes be no more. So keep an eye on the Yogscast Twitter um, for discount codes usually come, you know, like shopping times, like Boxing Day and all that stuff. Mm. So keep your eyes peeled at store.yogscast.com. Absolutely. Mm. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all.com forward slash Vidiots Vidiots Official. Official. Twitch.tv forward slash Vidiots Official as well. We stream there occasionally. I did a stream a couple of weeks ago, and you Bravo. generous boogers raised over a thousand pounds for Cancer Research UK. So well done. You're all well done. fantastic. But we don't stream on there all the time. We stream in various other places, and we'll get to those in a minute. First, though, streamlabs.com forward slash poddy at donations, three pounds or more, to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show, and to support us. We really super duper appreciate it. Mikey, kick us off. The generous Hawkman 105, Specky Becky, Sprinkles McFartstash, Your Mum Has a Username. Katie Kinsolo, who's also generous, thank you. Meg wrote this in the bath. Something witty. Serene is a giant birch bitch. Mm. Noel Edmonds from Oasis. Molly, stop meowing at me. Mikey McMikington, the generous Sniper Griffin. Steven Scordes, Mr. Blobby Becomes a Tour Guide. Mr. Black, Arseface. Arseface? What, what, what arse that? Face? My, <laughs> arse face? Arse face? Oh, he's got an arse for a face, has he? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> My sister caught me wanking. It's all about Danuya Coom and Lozikins. Thank you all. Oh, lovely. Uh, also, Bill and Ben, the Bot 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 Men, People's <laughs> Republic of Chega, Lord B and TP's Pumukul Fan Club, Pro <laughs> Trainer, Freddy W sent La- Laika to space. I am Bartek from Name Redundant. And here are the uh, here are top hottest Podiots donators of 2022. Rip Mr. Chagwin, who was very generous. New Year, New Dave. New Year, New Meat Face. Don Echo 7. Rip Dick My Chinko. That Asshole's Not Twitching. Raindrop Joy. New Year, New Start. Hyphen, a new start or anus tart. Uh, Kermit's A Hermit the Pog. Uh, the very generous Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween from Rusbus. Uh, Jules Farded and Shidded. Non checkable tokens, and Ben is getting booed. Finally, we have Bop It, Twist It, Pull It, Check It, uh, Backwards Joke. Thank you. The very generous Crapolian, Ivana Shea View, Ross Snowball, the very generous Prince Beefcakes, Mr. Macca, the very generous Surfer Dog 03, Gil SP, uh, Pingu's Dad Killed Pingu's Mum, Rudolf Schittler, the very generous Stroke Off Trent. You ever played Mind Goblins? Mind Goblin D's nuts. Love you boys or girls 15 quid. This cost 12 quid, Caroline. 
outright may have fucked it thing right so that un you read this trying to get reverse donation dave and ben's son philip and epileptic fridge boy thank you all of you so much for your generosity it's really appreciated remember streamlabs.com forward slash podiats donations mikey where are you on the internet at Parrot Boy on Twitter and the Twitch. That's where the best place to find me doing my internet antics. I'm streaming semi regularly again. Um, so keep an eye on the Twitter for some fun and games. Uh. Mm, excellent. And Peter, where are we? We are at Team Triple Jump, where we're still doing the old classics, worst games ever, rules boss related challenges, uh, live streams, lists. Uh, prove it sometimes and making food but some of those we're not actually doing at the moment because of Omicron Um, but you can also find Ben and I on our uh, respective social media accounts at confused underscore dude and at that Peter Austin on Twitter Mm, absolutely Finally, why not leave us a five-star iTunes review or a five-star review slash rating on your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms. We really, really appreciate that as well. Do we have a final question we want to ask people before we disappear? Um, No. What are your goals for the new year? Yeah, that's a nice one. Great. What do you want to do? Yeah. Well, you all look after yourselves. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Take care. Look after yourselves. Take care. <laughs> Go on, do it. B- b- bye. Treat yourself. Goodbye. Bye then. Bye. bye.